Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the broadcast. Uh, I did say that there may be an occasion where we did a few pop-ups uh, while the second year academy starts, uh, which will be restarting in September. So you'll be look forward to that. You'll be more than welcome to join. And uh, tonight is, well, it's a result of basically uh, the last three years uh, if, uh, in essence and on Sunday um, whilst Pastor Terry was uh, teaching on believing for big things I saw what was coming but enough about that let's get to uh, let's get settled and uh, let's we'll, we'll pray we certainly will pray and uh, Let's see. Uh, please like, share, tell us where you're joining from. We love and appreciate you. Thank you for joining us. And uh, hopefully you'll come out of this uh, challenged, encouraged, and actually believing for the big things uh, that are ahead for the body of Christ. Now, there is uh, a bit of a prophetic element uh, within uh, what I'm going to talk about tonight. Now, uh, I take quite a bit of exception when somebody says, oh, there's a prophecy teacher, because normally, um, yes, they talk about biblical things, but invariably, they're always telling you uh, what the devil's doing, what the New World Order's doing, and what... Um, everybody but God is doing uh, and really that doesn't give you a lot of heart that doesn't give you a lot of courage that doesn't give you uh, that hope in the midst of and, and I'm not saying it's not true by the way um, because we have got a, a very active enemy haven't we out there who is basically wanting to shut down the body of Christ so you know, let's let's think about these things and uh, and let's see really what has been going off this last two maybe three years uh, because it certainly has accelerated and God's not sat idly by uh, watching it all happen, uh, scratching his head and wondering what to do about it. He has been preparing his body, so we're going to look at some stuff that Pastor Terry has taught over the last couple of years and how significant I found it, how significant I found it. Now, whether it gels with you, fine. Uh, that's a brutal bonus, for want of a better description. But there needs to be something uh, of courage. There needs to be something that the body of Christ can get hold of and move forward in. Do you not think? As I said, please like, share. Let us know where, where you're tuning in from. It's good stuff. We do love and appreciate you. Now, let's, uh, we'll start with prayer. And Linda and I love Habakkuk 2.14. Because ultimately... That says a lot about God and a, a lot about what is happening and going to happen, you know, for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ shall cover the face of the earth as the waters cover the sea. Now, let's be fair, uh, the world has got a lot of churches planted throughout the world however we still have a there's still a whole new generation to reach with that message and hopefully this will give us some hope and uh, and maybe uh, that little bit of a, a a sort of let's go and let's let's re-energize into that area i think that would be uh, the right sort of uh, phrase uh, let's try and focus our energies into what God 
is wanting to do and allow him to work within us to accomplish what he wants to do in the earth. How's about that for a game of soldiers? Now that's quite good. And that fits alongside with what Pastor Terry's been teaching about believing God for big things, about being positioned for big things. Because he needs a big people right now. And maybe you're one of them, maybe I am. So let's open in prayer. So we thank you, Heavenly Father. We love, we worship, we adore you. We thank you for what you have done in my life and in our lives, in the name of Jesus. We give you praise and glory, we honour you, we welcome you to this broadcast, in the name of Jesus. Release courage, release joy, release provision, release healing, release healing from mental scars, release courage, release Lord, that which you want people, vision, release vision. Let people see who they are in you tonight. In the name of Jesus, and we give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Wow, it's suddenly gone uh, uh, quite uh, active out there. So uh, we welcome people. Uh, we've got uh, people from Brinsworth. Um, I'm not sure where Purun... Cash up. I hope I said that right, um, has joined us from. Please let us know where you're joining from. And uh, uh, it's good stuff. Now, uh, one of our members, very shortly, if it's not today, it will be this week, I think it's Thursday, uh, will be celebrating his birthday. And he's going to be 87. Happy birthday, Stan. We love and appreciate you, you know great help you really are i appreciate you thank you right let's start and have a look at the book of job now that has been a great help to me over the whole course of my walk with the lord but i want to take it completely out of uh, and into a completely different area tonight so let's have a look at the First part of the book of Job, and let's see what's going off. Ah, da, da, da. It's Job's back here somewhere, isn't it? Here we are, the book of Job. Now, one of the things you need to see about Job, and for that matter, the prodigal son, and I spoke on this uh, when I preached uh, six or seven weeks ago. God does not listen to Job's counsels. At the end of the book, he did not say, Right, Job, I need to take, uh, I need to tackle you about some of the things that your counsellors have been saying. And likewise, with the prodigal son, he didn't turn round to the prodigal son and start saying, By the way, I need to talk to you about what your brother's complaining about. God doesn't listen to those people. He's omnipresent. Therefore, he already knows. And there's always three sides to any story. There's my side, there's your side, and there's God's side. Now, my side will always endeavour to exonerate me. Your side will always try to exonerate yourself and perhaps blame me, just as I might try to blame you. However, God sees the truth of it. So he doesn't tackle you based on what other people are saying of you. He tackles you on a person-to-person -person basis on who he sees you as, what he wants to produce in you, and your ongoing relationship it's a relational thing okay so let's have a look at job now the first part of uh, job 
it's, it's the first few verses, so let's have a look at that. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright, and one who feared God, with reverence and abstained from and turned away from evil, because he honoured God. Now that's a great testimony in itself, isn't it? Seven sons and three daughters were born to him. He also possessed 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke pairs of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and of a very great number of servants. So that this man was the greatest and wealthiest and most respected of all the men of the East, which is Northern Arabia. Now, if you actually look of, of I just want to take Job completely out of the occasion, uh, equation right now. I want to concentrate on what those animals were involved in. Okay. Now, 7,000 sheep. So, what do they represent? Obviously, you get wool from sheep and you also get meat. Likewise from goats, you get meat and goat's milk and goat's cheese. So we're talking farming, aren't we? 500 yoke, 500 pairs of oxen. Again, oxen were used for pulling ploughs. So we're talking farming again. And 500 yoke of oxen is no mean farm, is it? It's huge. It's a huge operation. Job's operating a huge operation here. And he's also got 3,000 camels. So what are the 3,000 camels representing? Well, effectively, those were the method and means of travel international travel international trade so they went out and you've got camel trains going all over and likewise the donkeys were uh, perhaps the uh, amazon prime or, or uber taxis of the day they were your personal transport local so this guy this represents a huge operation now, if you look at what is physically being attacked right now, or what the world agenda is, they are endeavouring to take out international travel. It seems to be that it's quite difficult to go anywhere without there being um, mix-ups, failures, um, redirections, and it just seems to be like sort of, it's a mess. Likewise, uh, around the world, they are endeavouring to take what we would term normal farming out of the equation. Now, I read, uh, and this, uh, this absolutely made me laugh, seriously. Now, apparently in New Zealand, uh, the government of the day are planning to tax all the farm animals for passing wind to protect the planet. Yeah. You know, just think, for burping and uh, whatever else comes out, they're planning to tax cattle, sheep for passing wind. To protect the planet. In Denmark they're trying to, uh, Holland, uh, the, the, the farmers are up in an uproar because they're doing something uh, with the farming. And in this country the government is literally uh, paying farmers to take land out of production. And you may have noticed that when you go into a supermarket there are uh, some uh, gaps starting to appear on the shelves. So it's not a one-off idol that this is happening. 
considerably around the world. And if you look at what happened to Job, Job, this whole thing was just literally bulldozed out the way. Lock, stock and barrel. In a very short period of time, it was just bulldozed. Like that. Gone. All collapsed. And quite literally, that seems to be what uh, the world wants to do right now. And I know I'm not painting a great picture just now, but stick around. Uh, you'll catch something. Okay. You'll catch something. Because you're part of the solution. If you did but no. Okay. And just bear, just bear on that when you're watching the news. Try, just try and pick up and see and open your eyes. And let's wake up to these things and see what's happening. Because if we, it's like Pastor Terry's saying, believe for big things, we need to be praying for big things. But not necessarily uh, uh, what we might consider a big thing. We want to be in on what God calls a big thing. What God is calling us to be the solution to. He's calling us to be the solution to this. Okay. Right now, let's uh, let's crack on uh, and see what has been happening uh, in my sort of life. Now, quite literally, you've probably all heard my testimony, or both Linda and our testimony. And we're well on our way to recovering all, just like Job did. We're well on our way to recovering all, which is which is like way beyond what I could have asked or think way back when I first became a Christian. And But here we are, we're well on our way to recovering all and exceeding our expectations. In other words, exceeding all we could ask or think because of the power that is at work in us. And that's Ephesians 3.20. So just bear that in mind. God's trying to make the your spirit man, my spirit man, bigger than the adversity, bigger than the problem, because within He's putting and placing that solution to the to the situation to a situation that He wants you involved in. Okay, so let's get to grip with part of the process of, and this last couple of years uh, has been quite significant. I mean, it will have escaped you notice, know, won't it? But uh, for most people, there's been a lockdown, a worldwide lockdown, um, a so called pandemic. But I don't want to be controversial. Um, and they've come up with loads of stuff on the back of that. Now, that was part of the plan to move, just like bulldoze the church, bulldoze you and me and the church out of our significant place. Um, and to a certain extent, they've managed to achieve that, to a certain extent. However, God's always got things in play. He's always got a plan. And he's always got people on purpose doing stuff. So, now, it would be, yeah, just after lockdown, uh, I went out to Matlock to suss out uh, a meeting in a place. And I met up with Terry and Joe. And... They were one of the first people to open up. And then, during lockdown, they've been broadcasting daily, twice a day, on the internet. And I wasn't aware of that. But that's what they've been doing. They didn't sit quietly in a corner and shut down. They did what they could to prosper and preach the gospel. Now, I found them on Facebook and it was at the Allison House Hotel out in Matlock and I turned up one Sunday morning, the first Sunday morning that 
Murillo Park. And uh, I got on, it, it, it was a good meeting. I enjoyed it. It, it was, there was freedom and of course there was the presence of the Holy Spirit. So there, and it just rolled from there. Before we knew it, we started going to uh, the outdoor school centre, which was a great venue. We just built from there. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, over Christmas, uh, we had uh, a nativity, live donkey, donkey rides for the kids, giveaways, and, and all that. So it was great. And it, and yes, we did it in the thunder and the rain and the wind. And some of us were holding gazebos in place while the gospel was preached. But that's, but that was it. No, I'm not mad. I've been a scout and we camped in the rain. We played football in the rain in our swimming trunks. So it wasn't a great deal of difficulty. Footballers playing the rain, rugby players playing the mud. And of course, there's those uh, crazy people that do that uh, uh, mud racing, don't they? So, yeah. So, is it any hardship for a Christian to do something crazy? No, it, well, it shouldn't be. Anyway, that's by the by. And then, uh, last year, or was it this year, last part of last year, we ended up at Darlingdale Cricket Club, again outdoors, and it was great school. Now, one of the messages that uh, Pastor Terry preached was jumping Jehoshaphat. Now, that was a very profound message, and it should have been taken serious note of. Because Jehoshaphat was faced with, it got prior warning, that there was five armies coming towards him. And he took the initiative. He saw a word from God. He sought God for an answer to the solution. And his, the answer that he got was, put the worshippers out front and then advance towards them. And God caused chaos in the enemy's camp and the enemy's army started killing each other and running away. Caused chaos. Okay. So, what was Jehoshaphat to do? He was to stand in the middle of a chaotic situation and watch what God was, was doing and then pick up the spoils around him that he was to do. In other words, people were dropping things and he was to pick them up. Things that would be part of the solution to what God was wanting to do. And that was the call to a lot of people to stand in the middle of a chaotic situation. And let's be fair, this last two years has been quite chaotic and there have been people worldwide stand in that chaotic position and praise and worship God. And invariably they've picked up stuff that others who have stayed at home or retreated or whatever they've done have not seen and not picked up and not God. So there was a, in standing in that chaotic position, there was a law being put within those people for this next round. Just think about that. That's pretty awesome. Were you one of those people that were prepared to stand in the middle of all that sort of contrary advice, all that chaos and uh, it seemed every five minutes that there was a new fix, a new solution just around the corner and a new way of doing things. It just was quite chaotic. But God wasn't moved and neither were these people because they were there week in, week out 
wind, rain, thunder, lightning, praising God. We had a great time. So there's something coming. Now, the one of the other messages that uh, came out was Gideon and how he picked or how his followers were selected. Now, again, when you look at it, Gideon uh, or Israel had been moved from, basically bulldozed from a, a prosperous situation into where we find Gideon in the wine press, uh, in a wine press threshing wheat. Now, there's a couple of things there that are, are quite contrary. Even though the Midianites were trampling and stealing all the crops, Gideon still had wheat. So he still had provision. He still had God with him. He still had bread. So there was a lot of very big positives there. Although he wasn't in the right position. Now if if it, if 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 the leaders of Israel had have done what Jehoshaphat had have done, they'd have been out there causing chaos, wouldn't they? They'd have been in a better position, but there we go. So God picks Gideon out of this wine press and tells him to start recovering along. And he's not necessarily a brave man, but there we go. Uh, God starts dealing with him and prepping him for what's ahead. And he ends up in the enemy's camp. And he picks up in the enemy's camp. And again, that that's positional, isn't it? That's where Jehoshaphat was placed. In the enemy's camp. In amongst the enemy. And he finds that the army, the Midianites and all the other rites that were with them hadn't got a heart for the fight because somehow, some way, just the small things that Gideon had been doing up to this had caused them to fear him. So he took great heart from that and was able to take that next goal, next step of actually confronting the enemy head on and it was his brokenness but the light of the gospel that was within him within him that came out you know, just just think about that and that was a that those were two big messages during lockdown that are that i really picked up on jehoshaphat being positioned and how gideon was moved from this backward position into that similar position to Jehoshaphat and of course effectively it, Gideon's war cry was the sword of the Lord and praise, praise the Lord it was a worship it, it was a worship thing it was praising and honouring the Lord our God that is so so awesome just dwell on that, think about that, and you can be part of that, you know, it's calling people into that place, into getting that forward momentum going, again, yeah, but, what, what, you know, let's be fair, when you look at Job, all those things in Job, God determined that we live in them. During the Gospel period and the early church, the Romans had got a huge communication system that allowed the Gospel to be preached. There's your camels. They could travel freely and securely 
to preach the gospel. There's your camels. They'd got widespread farming, so there was an abundance. The Roman Empire was prosperous, so they had plenty. Wherever they went, there was plenty, and it was supply. And let's be fair, depending on how you look at it, if you're an evolutionist, sheep, cattle and goats have been uh, passing wind for, uh, what's the current thing, billions of years. And of course the, part, the planet's not failed yet. Oh, let me have a quick look. Oh yes, it's still there. Um, if you take a biblical view, 6,000 years, uh, the planet is still there. Why? Because God's created it. We don't know, we don't know, uh, if we know half of it, I'd be exaggerating. There's done tons of stuff that we don't know about this planet, never mind the universe. And of course we've got scientists that, uh, well, let's not touch that one. Um, who seem convinced that uh, uh, they can solve the planet's problems. Um, and really, it's a creation issue. Okay. It's a creation issue, scientists. I suggest you get out of the way. Uh, because you've got a creator to answer to. Uh, there we go. That's, just leave that one out there for people. So... As I said, for whatever reason, I was placed, moved into a place of operating in chaos, not knowing when the next sort of whatever was going to, uh, government announcement, whatever, but we were in a place of praise and worship. So have you, have you ever thought about the fact that when you praise and worship, you know, the chaos that's around in your life is actually you causing it because you're praising and worshipping. Have you actually thought about that? You're the cause of the chaos. Now that doesn't mean that you are in chaos because you are in right standing, you're in right order and you're doing the right thing at the right time and you will be allowed to pick up stuff to your next move, your next position, your next assignment, your next whatever. And you will see God move in those areas and that will give you a bigger perspective of a big God so that the next one will be even bigger and, and, it, and you'll, you'll grow not only yourself but your perception, your faith and your uh, view of what God is able to do, not only for you, but through you, to develop his kingdom. So that's pretty awesome. And like I said, just recently, Pastor Terry's talking about believing God for big things. Believing God for big things. And obviously he's teaching out of Ephesians 3.20. Exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. Now I started this by sort of saying that what seems to be under attack is the body of Christ's ability to travel the world freely. The farming industry. to be sidelined. That's all God's creation. That is God's plan for mankind. That is part of his blessing to mankind. And the governments of the world are wanting to shift all that. Why? Because so many people did not occupy that 
position like Jehoshaphat. Because once they've got the church out of, that, out of the way, their chaos doesn't become chaos. It becomes their way of doing things. It becomes their order. They all order things rather than us destroy those plans and purposes. Dwell on that one. So it's a big thing that's been going off. But God's got a big plan coming. He's got a big purpose for me, for you, and for anybody else that's got an ear to hear and a willing heart and an obedient heart to go. Okay. Now, it's, it's rather funny that one of the prophets says this, thousands are in the valley of Jehoshaphat. And it's called the Valley of Decision. So that place that God moved Jehoshaphat to is called the Valley of Decision. That's where decisions are made. And of course one of the things that again that Pastor Terry's been talking about is to uh, push out and cast your nets into the deep. Okay. Because they've been catching nothing on one side of the boat. And it says cast your nets on the other side will cast them deep. Now there's, there's a bit of a problem or a problem as I see it is if you're used to catching a particular type of fish that dwells in an area, let's say, 0 to 5 metres, let's, let's call that the area that they were fishing, 0 to 5 metres, there'd be a species of fish that they all knew was there, and they'd all, you know, it, it, it'd be like having fish and chips on a Friday, would it? Cotton chips, love, cotton chips, love cotton chips. So, okay. That's what you used to get. But Jesus is saying, cast your net into the deep. Now, you ain't going to catch fish that operate in that 0 to 5 metres area if you're fishing deep. So what's the problem, Richard? Well, uh, you're going to have to learn how to uh, recognise these fish. Uh, convince people that they're good to eat, uh, show them how to prepare it, show them how to uh, cook it, and show them, show them how to present it. So there's, whole, there's a whole new field of operation in fishing in deep places. And let's be fair, some of these fish, if you follow some of the... Uh, um, People who go down in these sort of uh, diving bells into the real deep places. There are some ugly looking fish down there. You know, when you first come up, they may not look appealing. They may be good to eat. But they don't necessarily look good when you first fetch them. So it's, it's a whole learning process of what's going to come. And we've got to be prepared for that, haven't we? We've got to be prepared that they're not all going to be uh, walking the saints. Uh, we're going to get some, uh, what can you sort of say? Uh, quite weird and wonderful people walk through the door, or that we meet, that we talk to, that come to Jesus Christ. And we, th and we, sort of, we might think, well, Lord, how, how are we going to prepare them? How are we going to present them as a group? That's part of the challenge. That's part of the learning process. That's part of what God's asking us to face. You know, it may not necessarily be God in chips. <laughs> you 
you know, let's be fair. Couldn't be some exciting stuff out there. Couldn't be some exciting stuff. Now, I don't necessarily want to be much longer. But why am I doing this tonight? Well, on Sunday, uh, I was doing what I, what I usually do on a Sunday morning. I was doing the, the, the sort of media uh, behind the cameras. And I was having um, a bit of a challenging time. Uh, but things were working. We were, you know, uh, not necessarily our, our of right, but we were there. We, we were in process. And suddenly the Lord flashed something, and I saw, I saw something. <laughs> it was, it was big. And I started drumming. <laughs> like a drum roll. Wow, this is, like, huge. And it was. What I saw was something, and please forgive me, this will be understated, because the magnificence of it, the beauty of it, the enormity of it, the presence of it is in here. It hasn't quite worked its way up to here or to here. So I can only talk in a limited way about it. It was huge. It was beautiful. It was glorious. You know, you can always almost put it in the words of Isaiah. You know, I saw the Lord high and lifted up in his train through the temple. It was on a par with that. So the glory is on its way. Habakkuk 2.14 is on its way. And that's part of what I've got to do. I've got to release that. I may not fully understand it, I may not, I may not fully be able to comprehend it, I may not fully be able to describe it, I may not do fail in a lot of areas with regards to it. But the main thing is, is to verbalise it. As soon as I verbalise it, I release it. And it will happen. And the other part about it is, if I am to take part in it, my steps will be ordered towards it as soon as I release it. If you catch it, that will happen for you. So when Pastor Terry is preaching about believe God for big things, there is no reason why you may or may not own a phone. You may be part and parcel of the restoration of doing, reversing, all that happened to Job is happening to the world. Right now they want him to enslave, to tie you down. God wants you free. God wants his word to travel the world. God wants his Holy Spirit to be available to all. God wants his Holy Spirit, God wants his people to be amongst the people in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, in that Valley of Dec Decision. So quite literally, it's a call to people to really change emphasis and start really preaching the Gospel and start thinking about evangelism and start thinking and doing big things. You know, just like maybe Jim LaBeouf or the Wesleys or other great men and women of God in the times past, you know, the people like Reinhard Polkis, the Jeffrey brothers. It's time. It's time. We've not got to be the people in the wine press. Yes, with, with the provision of God, we've got to be the people that have a heart, that lion's roar, to be able to move out. 
and start doing the things that God has called us to do. So, yeah, I'm believing for big things. Why? Because I've seen big things. I've seen what God can do in my life. The Bible teaches that God is able to restore all that the canker worm and locust has eaten. Not only in the life of an individual, but in the life of a country. Not only in the life of a church, but in the life of a city. Not only in the life of a county, but in the life of an ethnic group. There's a call. There's a call. There's the beauty of it all. Are we able to believe for big things? Seriously, are we able to believe that God's able to put you in a place, is able to sustain you in that place, is able to bring about all that he has promised you. Well, let's be fair, he's spoken some big things to a lot of people over the years. It's time. It's time. It's time. And uh, what's one of the exhortations is, as that hour draws near, let us be the ones who are about the Father's business. Isn't that what Jesus said? I have come to do the Father's business. It's time for the church to be about the Father's business. Right, I'm going to leave it there. Big things are on the way. Big things. A lot has been lost. There's a lot to recover. This is the hour, this is the time, and this is the place. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I give you all the praise and, and glory, Jesus. Give you all the praise of the Lord. Use each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for putting up with what I've had to say. I hope it's stirred something up in you. I hope it's reignited uh, a bit of fire. It may have even chucked up. Uh, a couple of months ago on the fight to make it burn brighter. The fire of the gospel needs to burn bright. The fire of the gospel needs to burn bright. Maybe God's asking you to make a few changes. Maybe God is asking you or stirring you up to move somewhere, uh, to perhaps join the other church or to be, to, to perhaps be trained in some shape or form. Maybe. Take a step. Come on, let's not hold back. So we thank you and we give you praise and glory. I'm going to leave it there. Um, well, yes, okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, the joy of the Lord is our strength, hallelujah, joy comes, joy comes, weeping may endure for a night, which is a dark season, but the dawning of the day is approaching. And my joy is coming upon my people, and my light will shine ever brighter. 
brighter than the noonday sun, and I will call many, I will call many from deep places, and I will bring them, and I will send you to bring them, and you will see the mighty hand of Almighty God moving your life like never before. You will see, you will see my provision, you will see as the world tries to shut down the things that I have created, that I will open up a huge vista before you and I will plant you and I will cause you to grow and be mighty in the land. I have called you right now in the name of Jesus. Whoa, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, I'll pray to me, that's, that's it. If you hear it, there's one pointing your way and three pointing my way. <laughs> I just, I just need to do that for Pastor Terry, otherwise it'll, it'll only pick me up on it on Sunday. Uh, well, there we go. You just, just pick up, just enjoy. Just enjoy. God enjoys your company. God enjoys your company. He really does. <laughs> he loves to fellowship with you. He loves to fellowship with you. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you praise and glory. Happy, happy. Oh, happy day. When Jesus took my sin away, he told me how. Oh, hallelujah. To watch and praise and sing rejoicing every day. Hallelujah. Happy day. Happy day. Oh, happy day. Happy day. And there are many happy days to come. Yes, there are many happy days to come. There are many happy days to come because I will not surrender anything that I have created to anyone other than my people. I have placed you for such a time as this. I have placed you to steward great and mighty things. I have placed you to steward the world's resources. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I think that's about it for tonight. As I said, thank you for joining me. Thank you for listening to me and putting up with me. I hope it's made sense to you. And I hope, out of all that, because to, to be perfectly fair, it's not, this last couple of years has not always made sense to me. Other than the fact that I've known that's where I should be. But after Sunday, what I saw, it's made the last two years crystal clear. And it's made the future ever brighter, ever more hopeful, ever more resourceful and ever the more worth facing because God's got it covered praise the Lord so again thank you we enjoy you we worship you and I don't know what's going on here but we'll find something and what we'll do is we'll leave with my very good friend uh, Noel Robinson uh, to uh, go out and of course there'll be the right details if you if you if you wish to give the details will be will be there for you so please feel free we love and appreciate you Here. Right, we'll try something. Else. We'll try something. Else. We'll go that way. Ah, there we go. That's better. <laughs>